Okay, today I've got a 1956 Piper Tri-Pacer. This airplane is painted in the original Piper colors, Caribbean green. They actually had a model of the Pacer called the Caribbean. came in this color. So today I want to do is show you what the instruments do in a typical light aircraft or general aviation aircraft uh, instrument panel. For this video, we're going to concentrate on the flight instruments. In other videos, we'll get into the engine instruments, uh, navigation, and communication. But for this video, we'll stick to the flight instruments. So your primary flight instrument is going to be the attitude indicator. This is just a mechanical depiction of the sky and the ground and the airplane. You can see here the wings. And this uh, configuration, it's not running right now, but the airplane would be in a right bank with the nose just slightly below the horizon. And these are marked in increments of 10 and 20 degrees above and below the, the horizon. So that's called the artificial horizon or uh, gyro horizon. This works off of a vacuum pump powered by the engine that creates suction to spin a gyroscope inside the instrument and that suction is uh, you can check on it with the suction gauge here it has to be between four and a half and five and a half on the gauge you can see that's marked in green another gyro instrument is the directional gyro they don't call it a compass because it's not you have to set it so here's the compass you can see it's just a regular compass. It's called the wet compass because it sits in a in a bath filled with alcohol. And then uh, the aircraft itself will affect the direction that the compass points according to various metal parts, steel, and where the compass is positioned. So each aircraft has to have a compass correction card, which is what this is. So it says for north steer 360 for instance well, that's not that's right on the money but as you get around to south you can see steer 181 for south so it's one degree off so you set the directional gyro here by looking at the magnetic compass the magnetic compass points to magnetic north not true north now the other in flight instruments you have are the airspeed indicator, which of course is just run by the pitot tube. It's air pressure created by the air airplane moving through the air. And this is subject to the errors of the density of the air. So as you get higher and higher up, the air becomes less dense. And the airspeed in indicator will read uh, less speed. So you have to calculate your true airspeed. And there's mathematical calculations you can do that it's usually a chart in the owner's manual of the aircraft then we have the altimeter the altimeter is read similar to a clock where the big hand is hundreds of feet and the small hand is thousands of feet and then the small increments are 20 feet each that is a barometric pressure self-powered by a diaphragm and so over here in this window you set the current barometric pressure or if you don't know that you can set your field elevation most airports have a sign with the fields elevation uh, clearly printed on them and let's say the field elevation is 40 feet so I would set that on 40 and then I can read the barometric pressure as 30.12 inches of mercury that's how that's read. This next instrument is electric. Now, this is sometimes called the turn and bank or the ball and bank. These are designed to give you a standard rate turn of two minutes. In other words, if you put the wing of the plane on the first increment here, that will give you a standard rate turn 
of uh, one, uh, 360 degrees in two minutes. So th this becomes important when you're doing instrument approaches and you want to do a 180 uh, direct reversal. So, and you want it to take one minute, you would bank over in the direction you need to one increment here and time on your clock, that's another required instrument, is a clock with a sweep second hand. You would time one minute and then you would know that you've gone 180 degrees around in one minute. Standard rate turn. So you have your airspeed, your directional gyro, your attitude indicator, your compass, altitude, and turn and bank. Now this turn and bank as a backup in case you I would lose if I was to lose vacuum pressure the vacuum pump would break which happens uh, from time to time on general aviation airplanes the backup would be the electric turn and bank and you can see when I turn this on the red flag goes away so I know that that's when that flag goes away you can hear it winding up when the flag goes away, it's operating because you can't hear that little whine when the engine's running. See the red flag? Gone. Gone. And the last uh, flight instrument that I want to talk about is the vertical speed or rate of climb. It's not just the rate of climb, even though that's what it says on it. It says down and up. So it also, this tells you the rate that you're either climbing or descending. So if you're executing an instrument approach, most approaches uh, are designed to have about a three degree glide slope. And if you intercept the approach path, the descent path, and go to 700 feet a minute down, you can trim for that, 700 feet a minute down, you will stay on your glide slope pretty easily in a no-wind situation. So the rate of climb is another flight instrument. So that's the flight instruments. In later years, uh, into the late 50s, uh, early 60s, they came up with what's called the basic T. They wanted to standardize all aircraft so you could transition from flying one airplane to the next without having to train your eyes to scan different directions. So the basic T I'll put up a picture, but the basic T would have the attitude indicator in the middle, since it's the most important, the airspeed to the left, the altitude just to the right of that, and then below that would be the gyro compass right here. So that would be the basic T. This, you can see this is a 1956 configuration. It's not set up in the uh, basic T. So that's the uh, tri-pacer instrument panel. In the next... Uh, video we're going to talk about the engine instruments over here.